Hi and welcome back. So um, we were discussing the prologue and we saw uh, that you know in the prologue it's to, uh, we are introduced to the major um, conflict in the play. The conflict is that you know it hasn't rained for about 10 years and a seven year long yagna is being um, done to appease uh, Lord Indra, the god of rain, so that you know he may be, become happy, be pleased with the people and give them rain. Uh, and at the, uh, at the it was the end of that part, we saw that, um, you know, some group of people are coming together. The courtier walks in, he goes to the king and some other people join into that group and they seem to be, you know, talking in heated, in a heated manner. They seem to be arguing about something. All right. Um, so um, then uh, moving on, and this is part of the prologue itself. Don't forget that. All right. Moving on, um, we see that the king, Okay, the first dialogue that he says is, no, it's not possible. It's impossible. All right. Uh, that's what he says. Uh, so before we are told anything about what they're discussing, what is impossible, we don't know. All right. He directly goes and say that, no, impossible. It's not possible. All right. And then there's, uh, there are uh, about four priests. All right. And each of them keep asking, where, are, where is the troop? And someone else says that they're at the gates. All right. So uh, another priest says that it's been so long that we have seen a play. It's been almost um, three years and we need a play to freshen our minds. All right. We need it uh, to be rejuvenated. We've been sitting at this yagna for seven long years and it's been almost three years since we saw a play. And it is important. It is important for to, you know, to lift the spirits of the priest that a play be um, conducted here. And uh, the king says that, you know, I'm not stopping the troops from coming here. So from that, we understand that the troop is actually an active troop, a theater crew. All right. And they're waiting at the gates. And the king says that I'm not stopping them. They can come by all means, but I won't have that boy. Now, who is that boy? We don't know. All right. Uh, so, uh, you know, then a little bit of background is given to us that, you know, it's been three years since they saw a play. But before that, they used to say, see four plays a month. So it was a very, very, you know, uh, a community where drama was very important. And the, the, obviously, in, in those times, drama was the chief means of entertainment. And uh, there were almost four plays a month. So what happened now? All right. Why are there no no place anymore why has it been three years who is that boy there are many many questions that are coming to us uh, simultaneously in this part all right uh, and the third priest says that you know those endless philosophical discussions metaphysical speculations every day singing chanting sacrifice it's become so dreary we need some entertainment we need a play to freshen our minds all right and um that is when, you know, they keep saying that do let them perform, let them perform, please your majesty. They're begging the majesty, the king. Uh, the king says, okay, I don't mind that they perform, let them perform. But why are they insisting on him? It's again that boy. Why do they insist to bring him? He's not even an actor by birth. Look there again, casteism, all right? Someone can be an actor by birth. So there is an another, there's a complete cast for actors, I suppose, in this particular community, all right? And that's why he's saying that he's not even an actor by birth. Why are they insisting that this boy be a part of the troop? It is only him that I have a problem with. And the priest says that, um, you know, the manager, the actor manager uh, or, you know, the manager of the theater company says that all the good actors have fled because, you know, obviously there is a drought going on. There is less money, less food. So people are leaving this place and going to other places in search of food, better opportunities and all of that. So most of the actors have fled. They are not with this theater company anymore. And, you know, they have no other choice but to cast this actor. And also he is a good actor, according to them. All right. So uh, the manager says that all his actors have fled. He needs an actor. And this one, he says, is good. Uh, and the, then the king says, but the chief priest won't agree. Who is the chief priest? Paravasu. Paravasu won't agree. Why? What does Paravasu have to do with the theater company? Let's see. The priest says, let's ask him. Okay. So uh, Paravasu said, uh, you know, did someone call me? He's a very serious man. And the king says, king is also afraid of asking him this question. So he's asking the courtier, you know, why don't you ask him himself, yourself? I am not going to ask him. Okay. Um, that is when, you know, the courtier says that, um, 
uh, there is an acting troupe who's waiting outside the gates. And now Parabasu is confused. What does this have to do with me? I'm not the one who's supposed to give them permission. So he says, that's a precise point, you know. Um, uh, and he says that, I thought that all these theater groups were almost gone because of the drought and the famine that was there. I thought they were all gone. And Courtier says, that's precisely the point, okay? Because uh, these troops have come to us, even though there is no way for them to survive, they have come to us specifically to help us. We need them, all right? And he says that this actor manager has come with a specific plea, okay? And uh, because he is a low-born person, he cannot come near the sacrificial stage. So he will stand at a distance and from there he'll make his submission, he'll make his request. So Parvasu nods, okay, fine, let him speak, okay? So then uh, uh, the, the manager speaks and he says that, sirs, as is well known to you, so he's giving a very, very formal introduction. He says, Brahma, the Lord of all creation, extracted the requisite elements from the four Vedas, all right, and combined them into a fifth Veda. We know that there are four Vedas. So he says that Brahma extracted requisite, very, very important elements from the four Vedas and he created a fifth Veda, he says, all right? And this fifth Veda gave birth to the art of drama, all right? So from the four Vedas, Brahma extracted all the requisite elements and created a fifth Veda and this fifth Veda gave birth to the art of drama. He uh, handed over this art of drama to his son, Lord Indra, who is the god of the skies and the god of rain, who is such a powerful god. He's the god of the kings, all right? Um, and he, uh, sorry, the king of gods, actually, not god of kings. So he gave this art of drama to Lord Indra. Lord Indra, in turn, passed on this art of drama to Bharata. Do you know who is Bharata? It's Bharata Muni, who wrote Natya Shastra. You must have studied the theory of Rasa and all, right? So uh, Bharata here is Bharata Muni, who um, propounded the theory of Rasa, and he wrote Natya Shastra, and he talked about the Navarasas and, you know, um, uh, Vibhava, Anubhava, all those bhavas and anubhavas coming together to create rasas. So he says that because gods, you know, they cannot indulge in pretense. What is pretense? To pretending, right? So drama is basically pretending to be someone you are not pretending about something that has not happened. It's all fictional. So because gods cannot indulge in all that, Lord Indra in turn gave this art of drama to Bharada, who was a human being. And so if Indra is to be pleased, all right, so it is something that Indra himself has given to a human being and it is something that he likes. So if you really want to please Indra, this yagna is not enough. We have to please him by giving him some entertainment. He says if we offer him entertainment in addition to the oblations, oblations means offerings. All right. So if we offer him entertainment along with the um, offerings, the God may grant us the rain so that we are able to look at that. Uh, you know, throughout Girish Karnath's plays, you see that uh, the gods, the uh, spiritual uh, gods are portrayed in a very, very different manner. You know, very human characteristics are given to them. If you've read Hayavadana, you see how Goddess Kali is, seems to be a very, very bored person. Here, Lord Indra seems to be interested in entertainment. All right. So if you give entertain him along with all these prayers, he may give you rain. All right. A very, very different picture of gods that has been painted here. Um, moving on from that, uh, he says that, uh, you know, it's the rains that we are praying for and God uh, Indra will give it to us if we give him entertainment. So then again, Praparavasu is concerned, fine, all you, whatever you're saying, I can understand that. But surely you don't want me to do anything about it. I am not someone who can allow that. All right. And that is when the courtier hesitates and he says that this man does not have enough actors to stage a play. Um, they need permission to bring in a person, all right, a particular per person. And who is this particular person? It is a new actor. And this new actor is actually your brother. Now it becomes clear that boy, that boy who has gone away three years ago, that boy that the king does not want to hear about, that he's afraid to talk about with Paravasu is actually Paravasu's brother, Aravasu, all right. Kotya. I told the actor manager, anyone with him, he's forbidden to step in there. Look at that. Now, Aravasu is becoming more and more of an enigma. We don't understand what is the deal with him, right? It seems that he is separated from his brother. He's not been here for three years and he's not forbidden to step in here. Now, how is that? He cannot be a low born because he is Paravasu's brother. Paravasu is a chief priest, so he is the Brahmin. So obviously his brother will also be a Brahmin. Then why is he not allowed to enter the sacrificial stage? 
so all that confusion is coming, right? Let's see if it becomes resolved. So the manager says that, you know, there's not no play without him. He's one of the main characters. There's not enough actors to, for a cast. So the king's, king says that, you know, they are twisting our arms. They are forcing us. And they know that the priests are, you know, desperate for some sort of entertainment. So I request you to just allow, okay? And Paravaso is silent for a long time. The priests are all anxiously waiting for his reaction. And that is when the courtier says that this manager has brought a special message for, from your brother. All right. And he will repeat it to you if permitted to do so. Your brother has taught him what to say word by word. The exact words that he wanted to say to his brother, he's taught it to this actor, man this manager. And this manager will say it to you now if you allow it. Okay. And Paravaso nods. He agrees to hear the words that he has to say. Okay. Um, so the courtier begins and he says that, uh, one second. Yes, he says, uh, and that's when the king becomes anxious. Are you sure? Do you are you okay with everyone else hearing it? Because obviously the manager cannot ne come near this place, and you know he will say it from a distance, so he has to shout. So everyone will hear. Are you okay? So the purpose says, I don't mind. All right, it's okay. Um, so the uh, 